the Dark One. He set his strongest lieutenant free. He may be waking the Forsaken. You have no conception of the power they wield. The only way to stop all this suffering oh. is to stop the wheel itself. Wow. We, we have a lot to talk about. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers all the way through book three of The Wheel of Time, The Dragon Reborn. If you don't want to be spoiled, watch at your own risk. So this past Friday, Amazon ran a Wheel of Time and Rings of Power panel at the New York City Comic Con. The Wheel of Time panel was attended by showrunner Rafe Judkins, and then actors Daniel Henney, Madeline Madden, Marcus Rutherford, Donald Finn, and Kira Coveney. Now I'll have a video breaking down the contents of their panel, and the other news from Comic-Con, but today we'll be focusing on the season two teaser clip that was released with the panel. Now it's very quick, but there was a ton of information packed into it that may give us an idea of what to expect for season two and some other cool details. So today we'll be breaking it down frame by frame. We'll find the hidden Easter eggs and some things you might've missed. But before diving into the breakdown, make sure to give the video a like, especially if you enjoy this type of content. It really helps YouTube like the content I make. So if you like it, please give it a like. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Wheel of Time and fantasy related content. That's what I do here. But let's dive into the breakdown. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the recap material from last year that was at the beginning of the teaser. And we're gonna focus only on the season two material. So we start here with this shot of some men galloping on horseback. Now it's from quite a distance, but I'd say guessing by the terrain and the number of men that are riding that this is the group of Shinarans plus Perrin. And they're either leaving Shinar or they're in Falma or in the area surrounding it searching for the horn. This terrain looks a lot like Morocco, but it also sort of resembles the desert area that they portrayed Shinar in. So it could be either. Next, we get a shot of Rand being emo Rand, which if we're honest, uh, is Rand most of the book series but he's staring out the window at night and you can see his reflection in that mirror. Now this shot is made more foreboding by the voiceover of Moraine saying, we didn't defeat the Dark One, we just released his top lieutenant. Then we see a shot of actor Ferris, Ferris smiling. So I think they're implying pretty heavily here. Most of you that have already read the books already knew this, but Ferris, Ferris is playing Ishamayel and not the Dark One. And that the plot to get them to the eye of the world in the TV series was more about releasing Ishamayel rather than the Eye of the World or the Pool of Sidene. We then get to Rand waking up quickly, and to me, maybe this is a misdirection, but I think it implies the way they shot it and the way they pieced this together is that Ishamayel is still messing with Rand's dreams, which we're gonna come back to later. I have a theory on that. We then move back to Ishamayel as Moraine says that he may be waking the Forsaken. Now we see this lady covered in blood here and the voiceover implies that that's a Forsaken. Then we see a hand taking her hand. Now on the surface, again, the way that the teaser is put together, this appears to be Ishamayel doing exactly what Moraine is saying, taking the hand of one of the female Forsaken, likely Lanfear. And while this could be true, I would be careful believing things like this in a trailer like this. They're often misdirects. This could be a dream sequence. That hand could be somebody other than Ishamayel. It could be Rand for that matter. I'm not fully convinced that Ishamayel would be so keen to help Lanfear or that they would be so friendly. And I'm not saying that it isn't Ishamayel and Lanfear, but I wouldn't be the slightest bit shocked if it isn't them. Speaking of Mr. X, this next shot is most certainly one. As Moraine is speaking of the Forsaken, we see a table surrounded by 12 chairs. And while that seems like it's close to the number of Forsaken from the books, obviously there's 13 in the books, and Ishamayel is sitting there, I think that this is probably not the Forsaken. As cool as it would be as if we had a shot of all of the Forsaken sitting together having a meeting, I think this is probably the Dark Friend Social instead. Ishamayel is the only one not masked and they are completely concealed, something that would not be the case if these were the Forsaken. Second, the one right here appears to have an Aes Sedai ring on, which by the way is awesome. Black Aja is confirmed, so probably not the Forsaken. It's difficult to say who the rest of the people in this shot could be. I don't want to give away totally, but I do think that we could probably see a white cloak there, probably our man Boars, and 
probably a Shinar and Soldier, but we'll have to wait and see. Next, we bounce to this shot of Negan about to use his baseball bat here on Uno. I mean, well, kind of looks like that at least. I guess it's a Sean Chan with a town of villagers looking on as Uno is apparently held in front of everybody. You can see Perrin and Loyal there in the back looking onward. That truly does appear to be a baseball bat in the Sean Chan soldier's hand. So I wonder if this is some type of outdoor public punishment. Maybe Uno is actually about to bite it. We then get this shot here of Perrin bowing or even sort of prostrating for somebody as he looks up. He's wearing the same clothing as the previous clip, so it's likely part of the Shan Chan in that village. You can see Loyal behind him also prostrating or on his hands and knees, however you want to look at that. They have been telling us that there would be changes, but I guess the hunt is going to be dramatically different from how it plays out in the books. We certainly have Shinarian soldiers running into Shan Chan in a town, so this is a scene that definitely does not exist in the books. We then cut to our first shot of Donal Finn as Matt. He's in a city with white stonework behind him, and we know from the clip they played during Comic-Con that Matt does spend time in the White Tower. So maybe this is Tarvalin. One thing of note here is that he is wearing the exact same outfit that he's wearing at the end of episode six. So I think that lends to the theory that he's hanging out here in Tarvalin. This is likely occurring sometime very soon right after that. Here we get a shot of what is likely High Lady Suroth. Notice that instead of the lacquered nails, that they have these nail extensions, like that they wear on their fingers. In the books, the more lacquered nails a member of the Shan Chan blood has, the higher their rank. If this is Suroth, which is likely, she has two nails, which is a very high-ranking member of the blood, but not three like a member of the royal family would have, and certainly not all five like the Empress, may she live forever, would. Here we get a very disheveled Moraine, likely still after her trip to the Blight, talking to Lan about the Forsaken. She knows, as she thoroughly just got her ass kicked by a Shamael and does no longer has the ability to channel, that the Forsaken are freaking dangerous. And check out that worry in Lan's eyes as he looks back at her. He knows that if Moraine is this freaked out, he certainly should be as well. Here we get another shot of San Chan's soldiers. The costume design is immaculate. There's not much else to say here about this scene, but just look how intricate and detailed those pieces of armor are. Here we get Nynaeve doing her best impression of the ending of Gladiator, walking through a field of grass. Now her clothing is an odd choice. It doesn't appear as though she's in the tower right now. She isn't wearing a white accepted dress or a novice dress, and she does not have her hair braided. So I'm curious when and where this will be. Could this be a shot from her accepted test? Uh, I think it probably is. Here is thirst trap moment number one of the teaser with a shot of Lan doing some shirtless sword practice. Nothing else to say to that, just a thirst trap. And here is Nynaeve again in what appears to be the warder's practice yard doing some practice of her own while in a novice or accepted dress. Now this may not be practice for how serious she looks in the moment, it might be real. She appears to be fighting two men at the same time, which would be quite the skill set upgrade for Nynaeve. It is certainly something that's not in the book, but I wouldn't put it past Nynaeve's character to at least learn something. It's just sort of that badass Nynaeve attitude. So I don't necessarily have a problem with this scene like I've seen some people react to. I am going to wait and see what it is. I mean, I'm certainly hoping that they're not making Nynaeve like a, a Blade Master or something like that. But I think it's cool that she would be interested in trying to learn how to fight. Again, here we get disheveled Moraine, still holding the knife that she had at the end of season one. I would imagine this clip takes place sometime near the events to the ending of season one. She still doesn't have the ability to channel, so she's defending herself with the only way she can now, which was a, is with a knife, which is not something she's going to be great at doing. Here we have more Shan Chan soldiers doing their thing and appearing to protect the entrance to this building. The lady here is not a Damani, at least not the way that we've been shown them before, and she isn't armed or anything. She could be a slave or some form of Dakovale, uh, which is a slave or servant for the Shan Chan blood. Also in this scene, this man in the middle appears to be High Lord Turok. Look at those long fingernails again. That's usually a sign of being part of the Shan Chan blood. Here we have Egwene in what appears to be a novice dress reacting to some type of news. Perhaps this is where Leandrin tells her that Rand is in trouble. Maybe that's part of the way that she ends up leaving the tower. Here we have Donal Finn as Matt crying and appearing to either show regret, loneliness, or guilt, or all of the above. We heard Donal talk a little bit during the Comic-Con panel about some of the emotions that Matt is going through, and so this definitely plays into that. Definitely check out the other video and we'll break that down uh, when I get that out. To anger an Ogier is to bring down the mountains on your head. This is a shot of Loyal reacting to somebody chopping down a tree or stepping on an ant. Okay, probably more than that. 
I assume that this has something to do with the Shan Chan, but it is curious uh, what could get Loyal to scream in that way. And now, thirst trap number two. Here is Yosha shirtless and tied up. This particular clip has me and quite a few others confused, however. This is the explanation or the, the scene, I guess, that we're gonna get for that wheel that we've seen in the previously released clips. Now, I have some thoughts here about what this could be. There is certainly some symbolism for Rand being tied to the wheel and not being able to escape it. I think that would certainly play well into being a dream sequence. So if Ashamael was messing with his dreams, this would be a way to do that. He does look surprised that he is tied up and he checks his arms and he checks his leg ties. So that would lead me to believe that it is a dream because he just woke up into it. But it's also done in the same landscape of the desert that we see elsewhere. So that makes it a little more confusing. I think it's possible that this is a real shot and that Rand has been captured, but it's probably more likely that it's either a dream sequence or maybe, and probably my, my leading theory is that this is also part of Nynaeve's accepted test. I would not be surprised by any of that. Here's another shot of Perrin with cuts on his face, looking as though he's just been in a fight and he's struggling internally with something. And again, from the Comic-Con panel, we heard Marcus talk about this. Maybe it's the temptation to again become violent keeps being put in situations where he needs to. And here we get Uno fighting a Shan Chan soldier. So he has a shield that he hits the soldier with. It's entirely possible and likely that this scene happens before the other scene where we see Uno captured. That was probably shot the, like that night. They wake up the next day. They've captured the Shinarans. However, it's difficult to say just by looking at this. We get yet another amazing shot of the Amarlin seat leaving a carriage door. Now, I would say it was her arriving in Faldara or something, but that background doesn't look like it, and I doubt we're going back to Faldara. I think this is either Kyrian. I think it could be her going to a certain location in Tarvalin, or her showing up in another city. It remains to be seen. However... Sophie Akinato is awesome, by the way, and she looks amazing in this shot. We get this shot of Ashamael talking and saying, stop the wheel itself, which is, of course, Ashamael's goal in the books. And it's also something that we heard Dina talking about, the dark friend from season one. Again, it plays into a little bit more of the motivations of the shadow. It'll be interesting to see how they portray these if it's not just mustache twirling villains, but more like philosophical reasons for doing this, sort of like they set up with Dina. It'll be interesting to see. Here is more of that nighttime battle between the Shinarans and the Shan Chan. Again, I think this probably happens before we see Uno being held at baseball bat point uh, earlier. I think this is probably the scene that precedes that. Here we have a shot that I both love and hate. We have Egwene screaming while wearing what appears to be the show's version of the Damani collar around her neck. I love it because this is a transformative moment for Egwene's character, for the series in general, and I hate it because the whole Damani and Suldam thing is very, very icky. Here are a number of the white cloaks riding towards the gate of a city with their sunburst shields. There appear to be Shan Chan guarding the city. I'm not necessarily sure this is Falm, although it could be. We then move to this figure in black about to stab down on somebody. And it's unclear who the target is or who the figure is, but it's probably a Murdral. The blade doesn't look like anything that we see the good guys carry. And then we get these Shan Chan soldiers running to mobilize for something, followed by this one catching on fire. Could these two clips be the ending to the Great Hunt, where now they're being attacked and they're rushing to, to defend themselves? It remains to be seen. But that ends the clip, and I am left ready to watch the season right now. Rafe did mention during the panel that, that he was surprised they put some of the things in this clip. I agree with him to a small degree. There are still many things, though, that we do not have clips of or any information on. For example, we still don't know much about what Matt is doing. We don't know much about Elaine or Avienda or how the Aiel factor into this. We haven't seen Galad or Gawain. We don't know about Elida or if Varen is going to even be in the season or what Alana is up to. And while we did get more hints about the Forsaken, we did not get much about Lanfear. So, I'm naturally very excited to get more. What did you think of the clip? Anything that stood out to you? Let me know in the comments of the video what you thought. Make sure to also like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time TV and book content. Huge thank you to my patrons for your support. I could not do this without you. If you want to become a patron and support the channel, check the link in the description of the video to see how you can support what I do here. Lastly, if you like this video, check out one of these other videos right here that you also might like. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace out.